welcome to Rotten Bollocks on the most horrible, wet, miserable night ever. As per usual, it's a Tuesday, so it's raining and it's windy. So, we're making this intro quite short. <laughs> we're on... We're busy hiding in Michael's box. <laughs> First time anybody's ever said that, mind. Naughty. <laughs> uh, we've got a big water drop in the camera lens now, though. Uh, wait, we're at Limemouth Beach. Uh, it's horrible, it's wet. We've got a southerly swell. Southerly wind. The swell was only meant to be between two and three foot, but it's massive. Uh, we are expecting a 1.1 metre tidal surge at high tide as well. And high tide's quite big anyway. At five o'clock, we've got a 5.1 metre tide. So it could go up to six metre, which means we could get washed off this beach. At least Michael's plums will get a wash though. So, so if that happens, this is my last will and testament. And I love my kid. I tolerate my kids and tolerate my wife. <laughs> Nicely done, <Michael. laughs> Nicely done. Um, we are, when it gets dark, we're going to be testing Moonglow trackers. Moonglow uh, trackers. Thank you to Danny from them for sending with them out. He sent them about ages ago, just haven't had a chance to do them. Um, we're getting little nibbles already. I'm gonna it, look, cut. it looks like white and bites. Hopefully it is white and bites, because it's one thing we've been missing up north this winter, isn't it? It's true. They're plagued with them down south, but they haven't made it up here yet, and I, I like a good white session. Fish cakes. Fish cakes. So anyway, we're going to cut this short here, uh, so I can get the camera back in the box out of the water. Uh, we'll catch up with you when we've got a fish. We're on sunny Linemouth Beach today, and it is raining. We've got a lovely sea on. It was only forecast to be a two-foot swell, but it's massive. The water's like chocolate, which is a good thing when you're after the cod. We've we'll had our first cast, there's quite a pull to the left with it being a southerly swell but we seem to be holding bottom all right so we're going to fish it in the darkness and see what we can pull out Michael is sat over there like a little gnome Right, sorry for the really potato quality right now I've got a water drop on the camera but I've also got the world's smallest flounder uh, as you can see it there give a thunderous bite uh, yeah, there's my first one for Rod and Pollocks I'm going to get it put back because uh, it's tiny but that was on salted ragworm which I've been salting myself with the Mungo trackers so we'll see how, uh, see if this keeps going Right so I'm back and you can see it's a little bit better now that I don't have a big water drop on the camera for now uh, I'm having to keep this inside my box try and keep it dry but yeah I was on the salted ragworm I am going to be releasing a video this week of us showing you how I salt the ragworm um, and I've got a few Moonglow trackers on my rig, I'm using a two-hook flapper and I've got a couple of the glow ones for when it gets dark and I've got a couple of the glittery ones on there as well for during the daylight hours now but when it gets dark, if this rain stops, I'll show you how you charge them up uh, you'd use a UV torch normally but I couldn't order one in time uh, so we'll just be charging them off my head torch and to be honest I was using them on Sunday and they're great really good products I do I do like them but we'll see how they get on the night as well but yes first fish uh, I'm gonna get my lines back out now right well I'm not sure how well you can see as I've actually balanced my head torch on my rod stand because uh, I'm an engineering genius uh, so far nothing since that one I've had I've had a few little bites few li few little rattles uh, I'm still only using the salted ragworm and I've decided I'm going to take this experiment to a whole new gear when I was out on Sunday everybody else had fresh bait and the only thing I took is a few salted ragworms I caught three flounder on Sunday all on the ragworm that I'd salted myself which was a week old when I took it out not, not even being in the fridge, week old uh, so tonight at the moment Tom's fishing all of there He's using the fresh baits and bits of the salted. I'm just going to try and stick to using the salted ragworm until I've run out. Obviously I've got it teamed up with the Moonglow trackers as well. Um, and we'll see what happens, see if uh, we get more interest on it. I mean, we're in the darkness now, the sea's big, the water's murky as hell. So there is the chance of a cod. Um, the only thing I'm worried about where I am now, because this beach comes right up, and then goes back down on itself and there's a big pool behind it and we're on a big spring tide and I'm now right on the top of that bank and the water's starting to get very very close to us we've still got just short of an hour left of the lift and they're predicting a tidal surge at high tide as well which to be honest I'm not a weatherman I don't really know what that actually means I don't know if we're just going to get a massive wave or if it's just going to lift it even higher but we might actually get washed 
off this part of the beach and have to move further up onto the cliffs. Uh, but I'll keep you posted on that. Well, on that, it stopped raining. I'm soaking wet and I'm freezing cold. But I'm slightly happy because I've caught a fish and Tom hasn't. Tom, what? what have you got there, mate? It's not fish. It's not fish. Yep. Is it a rock loon? Yep. Is it time to go home? Not yet, Michael. Not yet. But it's a rock loon. Bloody hell, man! It's one one though. It's not a blank. It's true. Normally you would dance about that, mate. Give it a kiss. Oh. What you? <laughs> <laughs> I can't get down to the water's edge! <laughs> I'm filming this whole thing because it's brilliant! <laughs> Tidal surges can suck my balls! So we think Tom's in here. Oh, Tom pretty much knows he's in. Uh, Bluey's turned deadly. Doesn't look too bad on your rod there, does it? Oh, never, never, never. I know what that is. No, it's not. Oh, thought that was a pass there. Not quite pan size, eh? Not quite pan. It is legal size, but I'm not going to keep it. Just legal, I would say. On the widow. The widow maker. Yep. Well done. Nice little fish. Let's get a. Yep. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. I need to restart recording again. Sorry, camera failure there. What are you going to do with that one, Tom? I'm going to get a put back. I'm not used to hearing you saying I'm going to eat him. Nah. Nah. Too little. Too small for me. Watch you put them back. Watch your feet this time, mate. <laughs> oh, classic. So, ladies and gentle fish, Tom again. The flatty. On Le Widowmaker. Le Widowmaker with the moon glow. You can see the, the moon glow here. Um, what I'll do actually, I'll try and get it to light up. As you can see, if that's moon glow, you just shine your head torch on it, get it nicely lit up. Back to I'll, show you, I'll show you the size of the bait that this pretty little thing I took. <laughs> Size of a size of a teeth. How weird, do you know what I mean? Bit of squid, aye. Aye, bit of squid. And a moon glow. I'm gonna get him put back. Yeah, nothing for the pan the day so far. Right, another little update for you. I stopped doing the salted worm test a while ago. When the fish typically died off, I started jumping on the same just back to my usual sorts of baits. Uh, I missed a fish on bluey. I missed a fish on squid. Uh, I must say, I'm very, very much liking these Moonglow trackers because so far on my rod, I've had my first fish was, I've only got one rod on out the day, uh, and it's a two hook flapper with Moonglow on. Uh, so I had a fish on them. All of Tom's fish have came in on his rig with the Moonglows on. So they appear to be working right now. Um, they say, well, I'm getting loads of bites, but I'm fishing. I've got a two hook flapper, I've got a, I've got a two hook flapper, I've got a two oh hook on the top for scratching and a three oh on the bottom just in case anything big came along. What's happening is they're taking the bait off my bottom hook and leaving the top one which they could possibly take. So I don't know, I can't be bothered to change things around tonight. I was just saying to Tom that I think next time I'm going to try uh, make a two hook flapper, but this time use the circle hooks that we normally use as a panel hook. <laughs> Tom's flashing me. Do you want to come and get in on this, you little sex pest? Go on. 
The Rod and Pollock Studio, mate. Look at it. It's backlit out of my tackle box. Sexy. Using the tripod is to keep the lid open. This right. is amazing. Who gave you that tackle box, Michael? Uh, I don't know, but he's really small. Apparently, he's got a cock like a Pringles can, though. And a better beer than you. We'll see. We'll see. Well, yeah, just don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, fish. Battle of the Beards is coming soon. We now have rules and guidelines about it. Each um, pound of fish is one beard point. Whoever has the least amount of points at the end of the Balkary session loses the facial fungus. And then must bag their face fungus up and present it to the winner <laughs> on one knee and the next trip. As a trophy. <laughs> the thing is, I know what all the viewers are thinking. Mick's lost his beard here. What people don't know is when Mick leaves the northeast, Mick steps his game up and normally outfishes him. Nah. Ah, yeah, it's happened before. It's never happened. Dogfish, I'll say that. Yeah, I caught more. No, you caught more on one rig. I caught more all together. I couldn't get back my rod stand that day. I caught more, but anyway, rafts, yeah. I caught more rafts that trip. Battle of the Beards is coming soon. I caught soon. more Pollock that trip. Oh, shut up, man, with <laughs> your stupid face. Mick talks poo poo. <laughs> yeah, Battle of the Beards is coming soon. Uh, Balkary Flat Rock we're going to be going for. We're not going to tell people when it's happened. Uh, we're literally just going to go do it, come back, and then release it as normal. And then the next week you'll find out who won or lost if they haven't got a face from this. So oh, good, it's kind of, I'm so losing my beard, aren't I? But yeah, sorry, that was that was meant to be a quick update. That's turned out to be a really long update. But I'll crack on with the fish now. So, ladies and gentlemen, fish last cast from us here. Yeah? Uh, Tom, something's had a go at that. Ah, yeah, that's right. See the teeth. Something's had a go at it. It's been well, dangling away. You see the bite on it? He just left it. There we are. A flounder on a mega worm again. That was nine lug worm with a squid tip. That's the first one on a rig without a moon glow as well. The first one. Moon glow's 4 1 tonight, isn't it? Aye. So, yeah. Nice! Get that put back here. I'm gonna go do the mile walk back of the water. Oh, uh, yeah, by the way, the water actually just left with. Turn his around my face and then dull the light out. Yeah, so. We'll probably do a bit more of an outer at the car, but we're packing up now. Um, Big spring tide, the water's just gone. So, it's not the end of the episode yet though, because I'm now going to add how to salt ragworm on the end of it, because I've now got time to go home and film that. Um, I've also got a bit of an announcement from Jason, the Eastbourne fisherman. Uh, I'm going to put his little clip in. Instead of doing shout outs, I've decided I'm just going to tell them to send in a little clip and then they can talk about what they want. It's easier that way, it saves me having to remember things. But yeah, we'll talk to you when we're back at the car. Well, that's it for the fishing. Wasn't the best of sessions. No, it was a... Uh, I don't know, me, I think my bottom hook on me flat was just too big. I was missing too many bites and every single bait on that bottom hook was coming back stripped. We've got three flounder, one codlin and a snotfish between them. So, it wasn't a blank, better than the blank. Whenever we see snotfish, snotfish are rockland by the way, whenever we see them, it tends to be a bad session. Yeah, and to get one on my second fish was never going to be the greatest no. good session. I've got a thunderous bite on one of my rods. It was the rod that I had the pulley panel on, some bigger hooks, but I missed that one. I just missed bite after bite after bite. So <laughs> he did. It was just one of them nights tonight. Right. It wasn't Michael's night. Uh, as for the moon glow trackers, I had them on one rod and I didn't have them on my other rod to try and give them a test. And it won, for me, it won 3 1. I only used one rod, I had moon glows on, and I got a fish. Uh, we didn't use Sol and Seagoo, or Sol and Seagoo, should I say, tonight to give the moon glow a bit more of a... to see if it was that that makes a difference, or if it was the goo. It seemed to work quite well. The worked, I think it worked really well, and I'm going to do it. I, I'm for doing it. The spring place, the spring place, <laughs> the spring place, it'll be good for them. Go on, do it, yeah. Michael. Rod and Pollux endorse this product. There it is. Um, yeah, I... Couldn't advise. I would advise them. Uh, for the, as Tom was saying, for the spring place run, it'll, work, it'll work for that. I think it'll, well, anything that hunts by sight, theoretically, it, yeah. should, it should work for. Like bass, possibly. But it'll like, never work for bass. Not, not if you're using them. No, I can't catch a bass. No. But yeah, um, this is the last time we'll see us two together here because uh, we're not out now until next week. Uh, Michael is going to show you how to do the salted ragworm. Yes, I am. I'm going to do that when I get home. 
because he's still got a bit of time. One of our subscribers, Jason, started doing it, and I got a message off him tonight saying he's been catching whiting on the preserve ragworm. So, Michael, do work. Michael likes it for his flounders. So Yeah, I've had four flounders in two trips and it's, on it's, salted it's, ragworm. It's worm that would normally get thrown away, so oh. it's worth trying. Um, I'm, so, we're going to thank my, thank my sponsors. Uh, Soul and Segu, Bait Mate Fishing Solutions, and Sakuma. Uh, I'm now going to pass you over to Jason, the Eastbourne Fisherman, who's got a bit of a special announcement. And then I'm going to show you how to do the salted ragworm. So, tight lines, folks. And may the fish be with you. <laughs> Hello, guys, Eastbourne Fisherman here. Uh, what we're doing is we're going to run a 400 subscriber giveaway. Uh, so, as soon as we hit a 400 subscribers, the giveaway will be drawn. Uh, all you've got to do is subscribe to the YouTube channel, The Eastmore Fisherman, um, and in the comment section on the Trident Tackle Pulley and Pulley Panel Rig, uh, all you've got to do is comment win. Uh, so good luck everyone, uh, and hopefully um, one of you will be a lucky winner. Cheers. Right, so that's a special announcement for the 400 subscriber giveaway from The Eastbourne Fisherman. Sorry you can't see my face at the moment, but you can see me hands. Yeah, I've got my camera all set up to show you how to salt these ragworm that I've been using. So for this, I've got my leftover ragworm here. Now these would normally just throw away, put them back in the water, uh, do whatever with them, you know. But now, I've found out how to preserve them. I don't know why I keep looking up as if I'm talking to the camera, I look at the camera, because you can't see my face. So what I do, I've got an old bacon tray, bit of newspaper on it, and I just... Try and get as much, much of the polystyrene, I think it's vermiculite or whatever it's called. Try and get as much of it off as possible. See how he's a nice big ragworm. Uh, lay them all out. Now those that are faint of heart, you might not want to see when I salt them because they do go a little bit crazy. But you just need to see it to see how it's done. Yeah, this process normally takes me about hour and a half, maybe two hours, before I can just wrap them and leave them. Uh, change the paper the next day as well. But, at the moment, I'll just try and get them. Looks like I'm going to have to do these in batches, because they're still... We did, fishing was that bad, we couldn't actually get that many done. Uh, but I'll keep... Say, I'll just lay them out. You can pile them up a little bit. I've piled them up on my last lot that I did. It worked as well, but with there not being as many as I had that time... Now, last few out here. Doesn't look like there's much more. Oh, there's one. No, is it? Yep, there's one. Get that one in. I think that's pretty much it out of the bag. So, put that into my rubbish bag to be bin. Then you need. The cheapest you can buy from any supermarket, but I use Asda because it's my corner shop, table salt. And what you do is, like I say, if you're faint at heart, you might not want to watch this bit, but you just give them a good sprinkle to go crazy. You don't want too much, just enough to give them a bit of a cover. And then you get another bit of newspaper. What I tend to do... I'll put another bit of newspaper just over the top of them for now and I'll leave that for about half hour 45 minutes uh, same as you would for a Chinese takeaway you know uh, and then I'll come back and show you them after then the paper at the bottom will be soaking I'll then take them off that change the paper salt them again and I'll do that until the bottom paper is not as wet and I can just wrap them up uh, and as you have seen, they caught, they caught the fish today. Uh, I had three fish on Sunday off them. I know you can't see anything other than paper in my hands here. Apologise for that. But yeah, I'll get back to you once, these, once I need to change this paper. And you can see how I've done that there. And then I'll show you the finished product from the ones that I've still got. But these will last. The ones I did last week have lasted for a week outside the fridge. Um, just pretty much on this baking tray in little individual wrappers. I broke them down so I don't have to take out too many. But I'll back with you as soon as possible. It'll be seconds for you, but it'll be 45 minutes for me to show you the next part of the process. 
Right, so these worms have had about half hour, 45 minutes now. I'm going to take the paper back. You can see the bottom paper is absolutely soaking wet. So what I'm going to do is fold even the top sheets wet as well. I'm just going to fold that over. Move the worms off. Proper slimy when they're like this now. And we're going to change that paper over, salt them again. And I'll probably have to do this two or three times. Uh, but I'll take you along on the whole journey. I'm in no rush to go to bed tonight because I fancy a Chinese now at home early. Uh, although it won't be noodles after looking at these, I'll tell you that. So yeah, get that moved off. Get rid of this bit of paper. Let me mount the old uh, bacon tray there. Get a fresh bit of newspaper. I use you. I use newspaper because I think it just absorbs better. I mean, you can use kitchen roll or whatever, I suppose. But this is just a little bit tougher. Lay them back out again. I'm not going to be as gentle as I was the first time. You see how they're still quite wormy and fragile now. But the more water, the salt pretty much just sucks the water out of them. The more they dry out, the more they firm up. And they end up a little bit like, I suppose you could describe it as jerky. Worm jerky or biltong. Um, but when they're done, they go on the hook lovely uh, and they tend to stay on the hook a bit better than a fresh worm. And so far in the past few days, the, my past few trips, they've actually outcaught the non a fresh worm. I don't know if it's because they can last in the water longer or, or what it is. But yeah, I've got them laid out on the paper again. So now, back with same salt. Give them a good dusting again. This time I put a bit more on. Right. This is also where I give them a bit of a turn as well. Get it on both sides. Because this should be the last salting that they need. Uh, oh, this is how I've been doing it and this is how it's been working for us. Uh, just give them a bit of a turn over this time. I mean I suppose you could salt the paper first but like I say... I've done this twice now, it's worked both times, and if it's not broke, don't fix it. So, well. now, there's a few people on the Facebook group and I've been talking about the Great Worm Experiment, I've been asking us how, how I do it. I said I would do a tutorial, but yeah, more salt over the top. And hopefully, that's the last salt they'll get, they're going to need. Uh, I'm going to give them another, probably about an hour this time. Like I say, time will move fast for you, so it'll just be from clip to clip, but it's going to actually be an hour for me. Newspaper back over the top, make sure it's nicely on top of them, absorbing all that water. And we'll check them again in an hour. And then hopefully I should be able to just wrap them up then. And then I would, I'll wrap them up, and then I'll change the paper again tomorrow and rewrap them. And I'll get, I'll show you how they come out like. From the ones that I've got here, but these have already these have got a little bit wet tonight. So I'll get one of the dryer wraps from the bottom. But yeah, this is one of my dryer wraps. You see, this is how they end up. So they're firm. They're not wet anymore. They're firm. These are a week. Believe it or not, this worm here is a week old. Uh, this is the one that we took down to up near Amble. It's the same ragworm, uh, they don't smell at all, so you don't have to worry about it stinking your house up. They're all individual worms, they go on a hook not as normal. You can funky them up with a bit of sea goo, uh, rehydrate them, but once they hit the water and all the salt comes off, they rehydrate, and they just look like a, a slightly washed out ragworm, but they're catching fish, and normally, I mean, I've got three... Th Three wraps, all the same size as this from last week. These would have just been binned. You're throwing money away. Salt them, and we're saving them. But I'll get back to you once the next lot's done, and then I'll show you how I wrap them up. And you can see them from there. Right, so these worms are taking a bit longer than the other ones. Normally they're done by now, ready to be wrapped. So I think these ones are going to have to be left overnight. But... As you know, I release 
uh, on a Wednesday. So I'm just gonna have to leave them like this. I'll show you. I've showed you what they look like, but I'm gonna leave these on here. Change the paper again tomorrow morning. Uh, get them covered over, and then hopefully by tomorrow morning they'll start to resemble these ones, which just will get wrapped up the same way, same way these are. Uh, and put one side ready for next week's fishing trip. So I hope you have enjoyed that. Uh, please give me two seconds. I will wrap these up and get you turned around to my face to do an outro. Right, so yeah, that's how you salt the ragworms. Uh, I hope it was. Well, it wasn't very entertaining because I'm not very entertaining without my little co-host with his hammer. But yeah, that's how I've been doing it. That's how it seems to work. I hope it's been helpful for you. Uh, another little bit of an outro here. Without Tom, it feels weird. This is just wrong. Uh, big thank you to Moonglow for sending with these out for what to test. And I can tell you now, they've officially sponsored the channel as well. So Moonglow are now an official Rod and Pollock sponsor as well. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this one. I know there wasn't that much. The fishing wasn't exactly great. Uh, weather conditions meant filming was nigh and impossible. Although the new portable Rod and Pollock studio, which is my tackle box, worked wonders. Uh, and we'll catch you next week. Tight lines, folks, and may the fish be with you.